Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. Another Chesapeake, Virginia Walmart employee is speaking out after the shooting rampage. Why her recount is a bit different from what others observed from that day. The details coming up. Taking a look outside with live cam, 59 degrees at 430 this morning. Ooh, it's just kind of another yucky, humid morning. Mike will have his forecast for us in just a bit. Good morning. If you're awake, starting your morning with us, thank you so much. Wish you all had a great Thanksgiving. What was the uh, what was the star of the Thanksgiving table? My husband made me a gluten-free cherry pie, and he made a practice one before we left. And it, so he wanted, much to break down to this thing because he wanted to make sure it worked, okay. and then he Aww. left it here at GMSA for them nice. to eat, and then he made you know. The actual cherry the pie. The actual cherry pie. Gluten-free cherry pie. All right, so I see the, the weather graphics behind us, Mike. Is there a lot going on? Not too much as of okay. right now, but, you know, it is humid out there. Oh, this is nothing like what it was yesterday. I mean, the humidity was just thick throughout the day yesterday. It was just kind of, kind of you know, that damp feeling and all that. And we, uh, if you're heading out shopping today, make sure you do take uh, a rain jacket with you, especially going into the late afternoon and evening hours. First of all, we can see out there. Remember, if you were watching yesterday, this was, you couldn't see uh, anything except the fog out there. There is a little bit of fog still off to the west around the Eagle Pass, Carrizo Springs, down around Laredo. Everybody else doing pretty good. A hint of it there, Fredericksburg and Rock Springs. But uh, for most everybody, if you are heading out in the metropolitan area, you're not going to run into uh, any fog. We do have some showers out there, as you can see, and it's not really a, a heck of a lot. This one right there, right around Pearsall, sliding up to the north, so that's going to be working its way into Medina County, and most of it's on the light side, a couple of cells here and there. And then further off to the northwest, and also everything is kind of moving up to the north today. Just a couple of scattered showers. Nothing is showing up on radar right now in and around town. And this now looks like the, the timing of everything has kind of been pushed back a little bit. We'll still, obviously, we have rain around right now, and we'll have some throughout the day. But the really, the really heavy stuff looks like it's going to be late afternoon, especially going into tonight. 60 here in town, mid-50s in the hill country. These numbers are also down a good five to 10 degrees compared to what it was yesterday. The, the humidity, like I said, was just sky high yesterday. Mold is on the moderate side. And as far as the rest of today, temperatures are going to stay steady or start to decline a little bit. So we'll be right around mid fifties at five o'clock and then continue down from there. Wind is going to be out of the northeast, 15, 20 and gusting. And then we get, like I said, the heavier rain coming in here tonight, late afternoon, and then tonight and wee hours of tomorrow morning. And most of the heavy rain is going to be north and to the east. Here in town, we're looking at half an inch to an inch of rain, lesser amounts to the south, more up to the north and east. And behind that, we've got a pretty good looking weekend in store. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio police are trying to find out what caused the driver of a semi cab to come crashing down on an overpass. So just take a look at what's left of the cab. This happened yesterday near downtown. That cab was traveling on the top level of I-10 and somehow flipped over and then landed below on North New Laredo and Frio. The driver and a passenger were taken to the hospital. Police don't believe speed was a factor, but think the slick roads might have left led to the rollover. Well, community in mourning after that Virginia Walmart mass shooting. As ABC's M. Wynn reports, we're hearing new eyewitness accounts of other survivors in the room where police say the shooter opened fire. The Chesapeake, Virginia community still reeling from the Walmart massacre. Police identifying the gunman as 31 year old Andre Bing, a store manager who allegedly walked into the break room and opened fire on his coworkers before shooting himself. In that room, Jesse Wilczewski saying it appeared Bing was targeting certain people. People that, you know, were just moments ago, just sitting there listening to our team lead. <sighs> It's rough. She says at one point, Bing pointed the gun at her but didn't pull the trigger, believing it was because she had just started five days earlier. He had the gun pointed at me. And then he went like this and put the gun up. And then he, he just looked at me and said, Jesse, go home. 
New videos surfacing filmed by a colleague years ago showing Bing at the store. Fellow employees describing him as a loner. Two wounded are still in the hospital. One patient is improving, the other still in critical condition. The city in a statement saying during this holiday, they're thinking of every victim, releasing their names and images. Lorenzo Gamble, Brian Pendleton, Kelly Pyle, Randall Blevins, Tanika Johnson, and a boy. Name withheld because he was only 16. You don't think something like this can happen, but it ends up happening and it just shocks you to the very core. The city holding a candlelight vigil Monday night at the Chesapeake City Park to remember the victims. Already this year alone in the U.S., there have been more than 600 mass shootings, according to the Gun Violence Archive. While authorities continue investigating a motive, they're expecting to release more information later today. M1, ABC News, Washington. For the second day running now, China has set another record for the highest local daily infections since the start of the pandemic. According to health authorities, more than 32,000 infections were recorded on Thursday. It should be noted, though, that while these numbers are higher than the official figures that were reported from the start of the pandemic, many of these cases were the out where the outbreak began in Wuhan went unreported. Well, back here at home, President Joe Biden and First Lady Jill Biden spending part of their Thanksgiving making very important calls to very important people, calling service members. Now, Biden releasing this picture and a caption saying, quote, Jill and I were honored to speak with women and men of our armed forces this afternoon. Now, he went on to say, quote, you gave up your seat at the Thanksgiving table to defend us. We owe you a debt of gratitude. You're the best of America, end quote. The Bidens called units from each of the military branches. Time now, just about 437, about 59 degrees out. It's Black Friday and having Amazon Prime or Walmart Plus means you get fast free shipping. However, there is an environment cost of getting the goods to your front door. We have some ways to make your order a little greener. And I'm sure you, you sat home, you watched a little football yesterday. And we listened to it on the radio on the drive home, yes. How about them <laughs> Cowboys? Big win last night, taking on the New York Giants. Hear how Dak Prescott, yes, obviously the quarterback, says he was able to overcome a couple picks and get that much-needed win. Yeah, it was a happy Thanksgiving. Everyone's <laughs> fed, the Cowboys won. You know, we some, have some pumpkin pie here. We might need to celebrate again. Okay, Breakfast taking a champions. look outside the roads. I had the tiniest bit of drizzle on my windshield and Mike says we might have some, we're going to have some rain throughout the day. We'll have our forecast for us when we come back. And speaking of Mike, let's take a live look out there at the Alamo City. Uh, like Sarah was saying, could we see some rain today? Well, Mike's joining us all morning long. He is a team player. He's going to have a full <laughs> forecast in just a bit. Whatever it is. Good morning. And hey, how about them Cowboys winning the last 10 of the 11 games against the New York Giants? Yesterday, the team going for a season sweep for the Cowboys down 3-0 in the second quarter. But the Giants are on that six-yard line. And, oh, here we go. I mean, just over-the-shoulder catch. It was a beauty. Falling down. And here it is. Dak leading the charge over the middle. And then, oh, whew right off the receiver's hands into the safety's hands and that's going to be the first pick of the day but don't worry he's going to get another chance they're down six here into the end zone beautiful so there you go up 14 13 into the third quarter two minutes left and then you can't draw it up any better than this except for here look at that basically walked in i think sarah coast and i could have scored on that play to be honest just just untouched and then the, the best celebration of the day i mean come on whack-a-mole in the salvation army and you know the cowboys and zeke historically great celebrations on thanksgiving so at this point cowboys up 27 13 and that'll pretty much be the end of it the giants got a late touchdown really making it a lot more competitive than it was but let's hear from from some people after the game we stopped stepping on our toes, making self-inflicted mistakes. Uh, didn't turn the ball over. Uh, we were able to get in that rhythm, get back to what I, what I talked about in the past. Our standard and expectation and pretty much scoring on every drive. That's what we're capable of doing when we're heightening our focus, um, executing in between the whistle and just finishing. And um, that, that's what we hold. That, that is our standard. And that's what we're going to hold each other to. But we've got to be committed to each other, committed to our game plan, and just stay at it. 
tonight. Don't worry, we got a lot more football to talk about. Here at home, the Alamo Heights Mules continue their march to the Class 5A playoffs, reaching the regional semifinals, taking on Liberty Hill at Bass Drop. A revenge game for the Mules. Remember, they lost to Liberty Hill last year, and this year, both teams, oh, look at that. Just beautiful. Both teams coming in an 11-1 record. Well, it's definitely a lot of motivation for this year, but we're focused on this year's team, and we're making sure we can keep progressing each and every week. And we're looking forward to having a good game. They're the same, you know, good old Liberty Hill, but we've we've game planned. We we know what we we need to do to get the win, and it'll it'll be a fun game. And speaking of the game, played at Bass Drop Memorial Stadium, 1:30 p.m. today. And as Michael tell you, weather could be a factor: possible rain, possible thunderstorms. And hey, how about a little bit of basketball? Yes, we still got basketball to talk about. So even with Coach Pop back on the sidelines, the Spurs could not pull out of the slump, dropping their sixth straight game against the New Orleans Pelicans. Spurs getting off to that slow start, could not recover. Outscored 29-19 in the first quarter, 37-28 in the second, down 66-47 and a half. Devin Vassell, my guy, leading the Spurs with 26 points. He was having a career year, even if the record might not reflect that. Doug McDermott with 21, a 129-110 loss, losing 11 of their last 12. And so the Spurs get to host the Lakers in back-to-back -back games starting tonight. Tip-off set for 7 p.m. at the AT&T Center. And here's the good news. The Lakers aren't very good. So this could really start a winning streak, Okay, Sarah. okay. Let, let's go. Let's focus on that. Yeah. Devin Vassell <laughs> looking great. Lakers looking bad. The Spurs... Trying to pull Victor's ourselves up from, bad. <laughs> from the bootstraps. Time now, 444, 59 degrees out. Still ahead, a first look at a holiday love story standing the test of time following a near deadly motorcycle accident. And before you log on to shop on the computer, an environmental impact you may not have considered. Are you a Black Friday or Cyber Monday kind of person? I really don't do any of it. Oh my goodness. I know. We're going to explain in just a bit. In this morning's GMA First Look, a holiday love story standing the test of time. Christy and Andrew McKenzie married 37 years, cherished time with family, and traveling on the open road. On that motorcycle, it feels so freed, and I'm of course holding on to the love of my life. But for 58-year-old Andrew, all those memories came to a screeching halt after a near-fatal motorcycle accident last June. All I truly wanted to know was, was he okay and where my husband was. Andrew, unconscious, is airlifted to the hospital for emergency surgery. And when he wakes up three days later, the nightmare isn't over. 29 years of his life have disappeared into thin air. He thought it was 1993. Andrew's road to recovery just beginning, and we'll have much more of this incredible story coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. All right, lots of people are going to be using online services to order their gifts today. Happy Black Friday. Some, something you probably don't think about is all those delivery truck fumes. 12 on your sides, Marilyn Moritz has a few ways to make your online shopping a little greener. It's the modern day sound of the holidays. Maybe having Amazon Prime or Walmart Plus means you get fast free shipping, but there is an environmental cost of getting the goods to your front door. Trucks and vans making the last mile deliveries are estimated to emit more carbon dioxide annually than burning four and a half billion pounds of coal. Not good for the environment or people. If you breathe in the harmful fumes from delivery vans and trucks that are going by, these are microscopic particles. They can cause asthma. They can contribute to heart disease or cancer. And that comes from decades of studies. Um, and children and elderly people are particularly vulnerable to those harms. FedEx, Amazon, and UPS all plan to roll out electric delivery vehicles, but that's years away. So what can you do now? Well, for starters, avoid one item orders. It's best to consolidate your deliveries into just one order if you can, and to pick the slowest shipment speed. That allows companies to keep fewer vans on the road. Or pick up your packages from a nearby location like a UPS store or an Amazon locker. That cuts down on individual deliveries for the trucks. Or you can always shop local. That will cut down on all those boxes, too. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 
And speaking of having to drive on Black Friday, let's take a live look out there. On the front no way. one's doing it. So you are up early, <laughs> one. dark and early. We got one. You are up dark and Two. early. Thank you for starting your morning with us. Obviously, if you are headed back to your destination or maybe, you know, headed somewhere for a long weekend, please drive safe, be smart. And right now really would be a perfect time to head out. Yeah. Well, yeah, because we don't have any rain in the metropolitan area as of right now, but um, we are. So the chair's broken that I'm sitting in, yeah, which is why I look I, like I'm at the kids' table here. So it but looks like the, I'm towering over my. But, we're the, but we're the same. We're the same. If I go like this, it's even better. Well, maybe so. we're the kids' table. <laughs> yes. Um, one day you guys will graduate. But throughout the day. So if you're one of those uh, that wants to head out shopping today, Earlier on in the day is going to be the better opportunity because then late in the, in the day and especially tonight, we're going to have uh, heavy rain move on stay, in here. Stay so. home tonight. Especially if you have to wait in line. No one wants to wait in the rain. No, no. But like I said, there's not a lot out there right now. It is more pleasant when you step outside this morning. As you can see, we do have plenty of clouds, but we can see because this picture couldn't see nothing yesterday. If you recall with all that very, very thick fog, we had those dense fog advisories. All right, so we do have a few showers around the area right now. This one cell right here in northern Frio County. This is working its way. It was just a couple of sprinkles there around Pearsall. This is sliding up to the north and it is uh, moving at not a real, real fast clip. We'll say it's been going at about 20 miles per hour straight up to the north and so, well, there's not much out there as of right now as far as any uh, any little small towns or anything, but that is going to continue to work its way up in toward Hondo and you will see some of that uh, some of that rain. There's a little bit more out in portions of the hill country and then further on down to the uh, southwest southeast. Pardon me. We do have a few more of these showers. Notice how they're kind of working their way all up to the north. But again, the big picture, there's not a heck of a lot as of right now. That's going to change later on today. Mid 50s hill country, 60 here in town. So about the same temperature as this time yesterday. Of course, we got up into the upper 60s and 70 very quickly throughout the day as that humidity just surged back in here. But that's a different story this morning. Yes, it is still humid a lot more than it was earlier in the week. However, these numbers are down a good five to 10 degrees. The dew points are the measure of moisture in the atmosphere compared to yesterday. So temperatures are going to be pretty steady throughout the rest of the morning. And this is all taking into account the showers that we have scattered about the area. Wind is going to be out of the north at 15, 20 miles per hour gusty throughout the day. Temperatures will slowly decline later on. So we're going to be 57 degrees by late in the afternoon. And then we will see more of these showers around here. Here's a computer model and it's initialized with all this rain. There's obviously not that much out there, but it is indicating that rain and throughout the rest of the morning. Yeah, we will have some of these scattered showers. They'll start to sort of grow in coverage, but it's really going to start to work its way in here once we get into the afternoon hours and then going into late afternoon and especially tonight we get this next wave coming on in here. So this is when we'll see the heaviest rain and even in the wee hours tomorrow. Notice how the majority of it obviously is further off to the east. And that's where obviously we're going to be seeing most of the heavier downpours inch to uh, or half an inch to an inch of rain here in town. And that's going to be kind of the the widespread amount, if you will. We're going to be at 57 degrees later on this afternoon and then continue to drop down somewhat bottoming out at 47 tomorrow morning. We will have rain in the morning tomorrow. Then we're going to be clearing out windy today. Also windy tomorrow, 64 tomorrow. Then we get up to 74 on Sunday. So once we get past uh, tomorrow morning's rain, we are going to be seeing some beautiful weather for tomorrow as well as on Sunday, Monday. Humidity is going to make a return Tuesday, maybe a sprinkle or two, and then we have yet another front that will move through here during the day on Wednesday. So we'll be warmer in the morning Wednesday and then dropping into the uh, mid 60s by the afternoon. But again, if you're heading out today, take some rain gear with you, Ooh. even if there's nothing right now. And the parades tonight, the river. Yes. Parade. That's not going to be, it's going to uh, be on the, okay. the wet side, unfortunately, yeah. for that, so. All right. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Time now, 454, 59 degrees out. Up next, how Marvel fans are getting an early Christmas present in the oh. form of Kevin Bacon. Good morning and welcome back. Guardians of the Galaxy returning for a special holiday movie. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. <laughs> 
It's an early present for Guardians of the Galaxy fans. A holiday movie special out today. And joining the cast, it's Kevin Bacon. His name was dropped in the original movie as a joke, and now he's part of the franchise, playing himself, telling us he said yes right away. Listen, uh, I didn't need any convincing. Uh, I didn't even need to see the script. I knew that it was going to be cool. The Guardians of the Galaxy Holiday Special is streaming now on Disney+. Plus. Disney, the parent company of ABC News. I swear I meant to mean the best when it ended. 2022 is a big year for Gail. Her first hit single, the breakup track, ABCDEFU, a Grammy nomination for the song, and she found out she'll be one of Taylor Swift's opening acts on her tour next year. And the 18-year-old tells me she's thankful for her fans. I wouldn't be here if people didn't add the song to their playlist. I wouldn't be here if they didn't watch the music video, if they didn't skip it on the radio, to the people who put the song on the radio. Human beings got me to where I am today. I did not do this by myself. Gail is up for Song of the Year at the Grammys. We'll find out if she wins February 5th. And fresh off her Hollywood star, it's a birthday for Christina Applegate. The Dead to Me star is 51 today, while singer Amy Grant is 62. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. Time now, 4.58, 59 degrees out. Lots of holiday events going on around today. We'll tell you when you can check out the Travis Park tree lighting as well as the annual holiday river parade. And if you have a lot to do today, if you're trying to steal those Black Friday deals, right now is a good time to get out and about. You're going to beat the rain and beat the traffic. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Lots of people hitting the road today, either for Black Friday or just to get home, we'll tell you when you can expect the most people to be traveling alongside you. And for people traveling today, rain could be in the forecast. We're gonna check in with Mike Ostridge in just a few moments. But for now, good morning. It is Friday, it is November 25th. It is the day after Thanksgiving, so thank you so much. If you're uh, you're still full, what is it? The turkey gives a trip to fan? Trip to fan. Yeah. You know, um, we gave our dogs, we had like four dogs at my parents' house yesterday, and we gave them a little turkey plate with a little, you know, mashed potatoes and stuffing. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, I swear, the trip to fan, is it trip to fan or trip to fan? Trip to fan. I think we'll it's trip to fan. Yeah, we'll trip say trip to fan, but they were out. I mean, it just cold. kicked in. Okay. And they were just all like, not moving asleep, and I was like, "Wow, Goals. This, this was this was nice." Mike, what was the uh, the star of your Thanksgiving meal? The turkey. My wife's got a great recipe with this. Uh, it's kind of an apple juice with uh, bourbon. Uh, bourbon. That oh, yeah. does the bird in for about uh, an hour or a day, I should say. Yeah, that, that was really tasty. And the uh, sweet potatoes. Mm. So, yeah, very good. Cat. Anyway, uh, back to reality here. If you are heading out today, if you want to have leftovers today, just kind of hang out, watch uh, some football games and everything. Not a bad day for it. 60 degrees right now out there at the airport. The bottom number, dew point is at 57. So the relative humidity is at 90%. However, that's a lot different situation than we had around here yesterday. As a matter of fact, I mean, take a look behind that little uh, graphic right there. You can actually see out there at the airport this morning because we don't have any fog to deal with. Uh, some well out to the west. Temperatures are going to make a slow decline throughout the day. We're going to be going from 60 for the next few hours and then down to the mid 50s by late this afternoon. The aquifer yesterday went up two tenths of a foot. The allergens mold is on the moderate side. All right, we do have some showers showing up on radar. Not really a heck of a lot as of right now, but it is going to start to fill in as the day rolls on. The, uh, the heaviest right now is this one cell right here in northern Frio County working its way into Medina County, and that will continue to work its way up to the north. So in Hondo, you may uh, get a little bit of that rain there. And then we do also have some of these showers over there right around uh, Concan and Lakey. But notice how here in town, there's really not that much, if at all. Now, Sarah, you said you had a little bit of mist on the windshield this morning. Just a little bit, yeah. So that may be it, but there's the uh, the detectable rain, although the whole center of this rain maker is still well off to the west of us, and it's uh, it's kind of slowed down a little bit, so it's going to sort of delay the rainfall and the, the heaviest stuff till late this afternoon, tonight, and then in the overnight hours. And as far as rainfall potential, you can see the heaviest is going to be well off to the east, and we'll see half an inch to an inch more up in portions of the hill country, lesser amounts down to the uh, southwest as the day rolls on. So showers, 
couple of them scattered about less humid. We're at 60 this morning and then throughout the day temperatures again make that slow decline mid 50s. It is going to be windy. We'll have some rain showers, some thunderstorms and then heavy downpours can be expected, especially tonight and it's also going to be windy today and tonight. Then we go into tomorrow and we'll have some rain left over in the morning. Start to clear on out windy again. It is going to be warmer mid 60s in the afternoon and then even warmer on Sunday. Good looking weekend once we get past the uh, the rain in the morning. All those details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to take a look outside of the roads real quick. Not a lot of people traveling this morning. Remember, if you are going to be traveling, it's going to be pretty busy later on today. Yep. Might want to get an early start to avoid the rain and the traffic. We'll let you know if any incidents pop up. And it is early in the morning, but some shoppers have been waiting for hours to be the first for some hot deals this Black Friday. Our Camelia Juarez is at Best Buy, where some shoppers have actually been waiting in this weather. So, Camelia, how's it looking out there? Max, Sarah, it's really good. So when we got here, there was a line. We're at the Best Buy Legacy store. And like I said, when we got here, there was already a line of people waiting out here. And I spoke to some people and some people wanted uh, new VR deals. Some people are trying to get deals on headphones. But I have two shoppers. They've been here pretty early. We have Martin and Azzy. And so they're siblings. So tell me, what are y'all trying to get good deals on today? I'm trying to get a new TV, hopefully a 50 inch. I'm thinking about a Samsung, maybe an LG, but whatever is on sale. <laughs> what about you? I'm getting $50 off some AirPod Pros. That's a good deal. That's a good deal. And so what time did y'all get here? Uh, we got here around like 4.30ish, kind of early, but I mean, got to get the deals. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, why did y'all come so early? Why come early? Um, we just really want to save the money so we don't spend a lot more than we should. What about you? Yeah, uh, just they usually, you know, Best Buy, they've always got like everything you want, everything you need, and everything's on sale. Maybe there's some discounts, maybe there's not, but point is that you're going to look there and you're just going to find out. What other deals, um, what other deals are y'all trying to get? Y so y'all were going somewhere else after this? Yeah, I was going to go to JCPenney's and Macy's, we'll probably buy some new shoes and clothes, so, yep, that's my plan. I'm probably going to see if I can get any makeup on this kind of Ulta. Now, now that is, that is... That is a good, that is a good deal. I love the Ulta deals. All right, well, we'll be out here all morning talking to shoppers and seeing what other deals people are trying to get. Back to you, Max and Sarah. Camelia, thank you. Happening today, it's the 38th annual HEB tree lighting at Travis Park. The 50 foot tall Christmas tree arrived last week. The lights will be turned on around 620 tonight. So HEB will provide free bus rides to the event. There will also be free ice skating uh, from 3 to 530. That's at that rink, mm -hmm. the park over there. This event is open to the public. On today, it is the 41st Ford Holiday River Parade. Now the parade starts at 6 p.m. on the Riverwalk. So if you're out and about, this is a great opportunity to take the family out. The Grinch is set to be the Grand Marshal for the parade this year. The theme this year is tastes and traditions from around the world. Tickets are available to buy right now. You can find a link to buy the tickets. Just head to ksat.com. Well, millions obviously on the move this, or move this weekend. Now airports seeing almost 10 million passengers throughout the week while nearly 50 million others are hitting the road. Now, all those travelers are hoping to make their way back home, but a pair of storms could snarl return trips across the country. Here's ABC's Rhiannon Alley. This morning, holiday air travel is back in full swing. I knew it would be the busiest, but I still have to make the trip. TSA has screened more than 9.5 million passengers since Sunday, back to near pre-pandemic levels. Some airports surpassing those benchmarks. When it comes to Thanksgiving holiday travel, Houston airports has seen a larger crowd than it did in 2019. And after a chaotic spring and summer with major disruptions and a slew of cancellations, less than 200 flights were canceled over the past two days. But delays were still a problem. For some families trying to avoid the travel crunch by flying on Thanksgiving Day, things didn't quite go as planned. It was actually pretty bad because it was delayed for like 
hours. And it's not just the skies. Nearly 49 million Americans hitting the roads. Despite record-breaking costs at the pump, gas prices at the highest we've ever seen for Thanksgiving. I filled up my car, I think, before I come, came up here. It was $5.40 something cents. And that was even cheaper for me. And this is $4.19. So I was like, this is crazy. But as travelers make their return journeys, two storm systems could complicate things. Rhiannon Alley, ABC News, New York. Time now, just about 5'10", 59 degrees out. From dead roaches to people not washing their hands to workers even taking food from a restaurant to prepare at their home, we'll tell you where health safety inspectors found violations in several San Antonio restaurants. And like you heard from Rhiannon Alley, it is going to be a busy day on the roadways. Not busy yet, although it is starting to pick up much different look than what we saw at 430 this morning. So if you do have a lot to do, make sure to beat the traffic, beat the rain. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. Welcome back to Kitchen at a popular West Side flea market. Told to stop making food at home and get rid of several dead roaches while two Mexican restaurants had problems with repeat health violations. Tim, Berger, Tim Gerber takes us behind the kitchen door. Mary's Kitchen, located in the Bandera Flea Market in the 1300 block of Bandera Road, earned a 75 on their recent health inspection. The inspector found cooked brisket and barbacoa was sitting out at room temperature. On top of that, the meat was prepared at someone's home. The inspector reminding the business all food served to customers must be made in a licensed facility or on site. The inside of the refrigerator, freezers, and bins where clean wares are kept needed to be thoroughly cleaned. Several dead roaches were found in baskets holding clean napkins, while more dead roaches were found along the gaskets, doors, and shelves of refrigeration units. A reinspection was ordered. Jalisco Taqueria No. 5 in the 6500 block of Babcock comes in with a 68, a significant drop from their previous score of 84 from an inspection back in May. This time around, they had three repeat violations. Their biggest problem was employees handling food without gloves or hand washing. The inspector observed food prep workers not wearing gloves when making masa while also handling their personal cell phone. Another worker dicing lettuce was caught wiping their hands on a dirty apron, then returned to dicing. Another was seen taking off old gloves and putting on a new pair without washing their hands. The inspector also found several in use spray bottles containing toxic chemicals that were not labeled indicating what was in the bottle. Torito Mexican restaurant in the 5300 block of South Presa racked up eight repeat violations, earning them a 79. Day old refried beans in the cooler were tempted 83 degrees. The beans were condemned. Clean plates had visible dirt like substances on them. A walk in cooler had rusty shelves and there were buckets of food being stored on the floor of the cooler. The kitchen was also in need of a detailed cleaning. A reinspection was ordered. That's what's happening behind the kitchen door. Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. Time now, 5:15, 59 degrees out. Elon Musk says suspended Twitter accounts will soon be granted amnesty. We'll tell you when those accounts will be restored. Yeah, let's take a live look. All right, so traffic is starting to pick up. We know we have a lot of people either headed to new destinations or coming home from Thanksgiving dinner. We're going to have your full forecast, see if you can dodge those rains in just a bit. What's the number one retinol brand used most by dermatologists? It's Neutrogena. Rapid wrinkle repair smooths the look of fine lines in one week, deep wrinkles in four, so you can kiss wrinkles goodbye. Neutrogena. Listen, I'm done settling because this is my secret. I put it on once, no more touch-up. Secret has pH balancing minerals and it helps eliminate odor instead of just masking it. So pull it in close. Secret works. BioFreeze, the number one clinician recommended menthol topical pain relief brand. Works fast, lasts long. Cool the pain with BioFreeze. <laughs> Human, Sauvage, Elixir, Dior. That Mace is the fragrance destination.
today's Tech Bytes, amnesty for suspended Twitter users. Owner Elon Musk has decided anyone whose account was shut down can come back next week, provided they haven't broken the law or taken part in spamming people. The move is in response to a poll Musk posted on Thursday. Ten state attorneys general want Apple to create stronger privacy controls from apps that collect reproductive health data from users. They say otherwise those seeking or providing abortions, for example, are at risk. But Apple says if consumers enable two-factor authentication, their information is safe. And now is your chance to send your thoughts into space. NASA is allowing those of us on Earth to transmit messages to an iPad on board the Orion spacecraft. Just use a form on the Callisto website. If the message gets an OK, it will appear inside the Orion capsule for the world to see. Those are your Tech Bytes. Taking a look outside with the roads with Trans Guide. Okay, not a lot of people on the roads <laughs> right now. I mean, it's it's the day after Thanksgiving. It's Black Friday, but people are shopping at home. But hey, if you are going to do shopping in person, Mike says maybe do it earlier in the day versus later in the day because we're expecting some rain. Yeah, case in point, I mean, you know, just a comparison to yesterday, we could not see anything in this picture because we had all that fog out there and the roads were just damp, kind of murky throughout much of the day. And then things did have a chance to dry out. We actually have a front that moved on through here. And so that's why it's more comfortable when you step outside this morning. The humidity has dropped down. Now we do obviously have some rain and the one spot where it's kind of taken notice right here, this batch of uh, showers, which and a couple of uh, decent downpours here and there. We're not detecting any lightning with this. This is sliding up to the north and, and you can see some of the rain is now already starting to work its way into Hondo. And this is moving to the north at roughly 20 to 25 miles per hour. So at that rate, let's see what, uh, let me try this again right here. And we are going to put that up to the north at 20 miles per hour. So that's going to be hitting Hondo right about uh, six o'clock this morning. And that will continue up to the north. There may actually see a couple of lightning strikes with that as well. So just kind of keep that in mind. Elsewhere, as far as uh, rain, there is some out in portions of the hill country and then some down to the uh, southwest. This is all again kind of working its way in somewhat of a north to northeastward direction. Think of a large wheel spinning and the hub of that wheel is off to the west and it's spinning in a counterclockwise direction and that's why this rain is working its way up to the north. That's the low out there to the west of us, which is going to work its way through here, but it's slowed down somewhat. Temperatures are going to stay steady throughout the next couple of hours with all this cloud cover out there, and then we will make a slow decline throughout the day and wind is going to pick up as well out of the northeast 15 20 miles per hour, and we will start to see more showers around, especially going into the late afternoon evening and then tonight and overnight, which this model I think does a fantastic job. It's got Primarily the rain well off to the west this morning, and then it starts to spread a little bit more, but nothing really to write home about. Uh, there'll be a couple of uh, heavier downpours here and there, but especially once we get in toward dinner time tonight and it's going to be a good chance for some rain for the the Christmas parade down there on the river tonight. And then going into late night, we have more of the widespread heavier downpours. That'll be the situation going into tomorrow morning. And notice how the majority of that is well off to the east. That's where obviously some of the heavier rainfall totals are going to be. We're looking at a half an inch to an inch of rain in town, and it's kind of uh, the dividing line, say, along 10 and 37 more rain north and east of there, lesser amounts of rain down to the uh, south. So here's the satellite radar picture, and I was talking about that wheel spinning. That's that low right there in southern New Mexico. This thing, it, it's been sort of taking its time, and like I said, it has slowed down somewhat. So here's what this larger, broader view looks like with that low spinning right here. It, there's where the heavy rain comes on in here tonight, and then finally that thing gets on out of here throughout the uh, morning hours. Tomorrow we'll have the leftover morning rain tomorrow. Then we uh, are going to see more sunshine in the afternoon. So potentially heavy rain, especially tonight and in the overnight hours. 57 today, 47 tomorrow morning, 64 then. Beautiful it's going to be windy again tomorrow. We make it up into the mid mid 70s tomorrow as well as uh, excuse me, mid 70s on Sunday. And then we are going to be mid 70s Monday. Really nice, cool mornings around here and more humidity Tuesday. Another front's going to move through and that'll knock some of that humidity out of here by the middle part of next week. But again, today 
throughout much of the area. Mm. Not bad. Take a rain jacket, take an umbrella, but tonight and then uh, in the overnight hours, some of that heavier rain. And we have some football tonight. We have the the parade river parade downtown. tonight. I mean, not ideal weather for these events. Yeah. The Christmas tree lighting. Yep. Um, hey, you know what? Get down there anyway. You know so. what? Yeah. Sure. Bundle up. Bring bring the rain gear. Right. The holiday spirit. Exactly. Here on your team. Thank you, Mike. Time now, 524, 59 degrees out. Happy night of the lights! This is the darkest night of the year. We are okay, do you guys remember Fraggle Rock? <laughs> Max is saying no. Well, it's back with a new holiday special. We'll tell you when and where you can watch it. Good morning and welcome back. So if you remember Jim Henson's Fraggle Rock gang, they're back with a new holiday special. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Happy Night of the Lights! This is the darkest night of the year. We are going to find the brightest, most magical light in the whole world. Uncle Traveling Matt and the Fraggle Rock family go in search of some holiday magic, including visits to the silly creatures in the Fraggle Rock Back to the Rock special, Night of the Lights. I went looking for the Night of the Lights in, in, the, in the silly creature world, and it turns out that silly creatures seem to celebrate with lights as well. And the Fraggle Rock Back to the Rock holiday special is now streaming on Apple TV+. Plus. The Swimmers tells the story of sisters Yisra and Sarah Mardini, who fled war-torn Syria in hopes of a better life. But Sally El Hosseini's film is also about the millions of other refugees desperately seeking safety. The audience is very much on the journey with the sisters, but then you have those moments where you step back and see the scale and understand the context of what this very specific story is set in. The Swimmers is now in theaters and on Netflix. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Time now, 529, 59 degrees now. Still head on GMSA, a unique look inside NATO's new space center oh. and how the military there works to protect the U.S. from attacks. And head on GMSA at 6, UTSA making a run for a second straight Conference USA title. We have that, plus a preview of tomorrow's final regular season matchup in the Dome. Well, a mysterious new division of military personnel quietly working to keep America safe and its allies safe from hostile attacks in space. We're going to give you an exclusive look inside NATO's new Space Center. Taking a look outside with live cam. It is 59 degrees. It's, you know, a little chilly, a little... Is it damp out there yet? But it's gonna be it's gonna be a wetter afternoon. Mike will explain that in just a bit. Wetter weather. Good morning. It is Friday, it's November 25th. I gotta say, the last couple of days I've just wanted to see the sun. Yeah, that's why it was. I'm sorry, I, I don't have a chair over here, so. <laughs> sorry, right, they're adjusting okay. the camera but, just for you. Um, yeah, a lot of people were thinking that earlier on in the week, too, and last week, and we had all those gray, you know, cloudy, really, really cold days. There was a hint of sunshine yesterday. We'll see a lot more this weekend, so especially tomorrow afternoon and then going into uh, Saturday and Sunday. Now, as far as rain, obviously there is some out there on radar right now. We don't have a, a heck of a lot, and it is going to turn into a lot more as the uh, we go into tonight and then especially later on tonight and overnight. So first of all, take a look outside. And the good news is if you were uh, if you were up and about early yesterday, it was just a murky, muggy, foggy day. We couldn't see anything out there. Now at least we can see and uh, roads are fairly dry right now. We there have been a couple of sprinkles here and there. 60 degrees dew point stands at 56. So that's actually dropped down a couple of notches just in the past few hours and it's roughly 10, 11, 12 degrees lower than what it was at this time yesterday. It was really, really humid yesterday and the wind is out of the northeast at eight miles per hour. So again, here's what's going on on radar. And right now we've been watching this one batch of some uh, showers. This cell, which is working its way in toward Hondo, just to the east of Sabinal, sliding up to the north at 20 miles per hour. So you're seeing some of that rain in Hondo. And then further off to the northwest, we've got a couple of showers there moving through Lakey. In and around town, now Sarah said she saw a couple little, uh, little bits of mist on the windshield. So you may run into some of that. But we're not looking at any widespread rain as of right now. It's very kind of limited, but that is 
is all going to be changing as a big low that's parked off to the west of us right now over there in southern New Mexico kind of just uh, meanders through the western part of the state and then moves across the, the northern part of Texas later on today and that's going to be when we see the heavier rain 54 right now Bernie stage 59 Helotus 60 here in town and again the humidity is much much lower than what it was at this time yesterday and it will continue to drop down as will temperatures we are going to have a slow decline throughout the day wind is going to be picking up out of the northeast 15 20 miles per hour gusty it's also going to be very gusty uh, tomorrow but later on today again mid 50s so Grab a jacket, not only to with the windy conditions out there, mid 50s is going to be kind of chilly, but then we'll have showers off and on throughout the day and they'll start to pick up in intensity as we go into the late afternoon, evening hours, and especially tonight and overnight. And we can expect some heavy rain. Who's going to get the most? And then what's the weekend look like? It's going to be pretty once we get past tomorrow morning. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Mike. All right, let's take a look outside. Little more traffic on the roads right now at 535 and we see, saw, you know, at four, the 430 hour. Um, if any incidents pop up, we'll let you know about them throughout the morning. All right, so we've been talking about inflation for a while now and these elevated prices for food, rent, gas and so many other household costs, obviously taking a toll on shoppers across the country. Even so, Black Friday is here and some are still trying to figure out ways to get the best deals on gifts. So the National Retail Federation says more than 166 million people are expected to shop over this weekend. Our Camellia Wattis is with some of those savvy shoppers at Best Buy. Camellia, <coughs> how does this Black Friday compare to previous years? Max, Sarah, there's, I think supply chain issues are also another issue because I'm with two shoppers and they said that they rushed over because it's hard to get this device. So I have James and Kate in here and they're, just show us what y'all got. What did y'all get? Uh, so we got these MetaQuest uh, 2 like VR headsets. So they said they got here at 4.30 this morning because they really wanted those. Tell me about the experience y'all had last year trying to get something and then trying to get these this year. Uh, well, last year trying to get something, I was trying to find an Xbox, and it was an absolute nightmare. I went to like three different stores trying to get one, and I didn't end up finding any. Yeah, I went to two Game Stops, and I woke up at 3 a.m., and I couldn't find anywhere. I waited in line, and they barely had any. But, so that's why they decided to come early to try and get these VR. So what kind of deal? Do you feel like you got a good deal, or was it more about just trying to get the, 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 the goggles? Um, I mean, it was only like 50 bucks off, but uh, I think I, I mean, I think I got a good deal because these things are, you know, pretty hard to find, you know, it's emerging technology. Uh, like you said, they're hard to come by. So whenever I saw them, I thought I should grab it uh, just because I've been wanting one for a while now. So are, do you have any, are you still going to try and shop for like Cyber Monday? Do you are trying to get any more deals? Uh, yeah, I'll probably hit up Cyber Monday, but I don't know. I kind of dropped a lot on this, so we'll see. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I was just thinking. I mean, might as well look over at Cyber Monday, but probably this might be it for now. That's, I mean, I think that's, I think everything is costing more. I think everything is just, we're trying to save where we can. But for now, I'll send it right back to you in the studio. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Camelia. It's been six months since 21 people were killed inside of Robb Elementary. Families and loved ones have fought for accountability and change. Behind them is a core group. So the group calls themselves K-A-R-M-A, Karma. It's an acronym that stands for Keep All Righteous Minds Aware. So the group has been a constant presence at school board and city council meetings. They're fighting to raise the standards for police in Uvalde, make schools and parks safe, and make the community an overall better place. Our main focus now has been uh, the children of Rob and the families in the community and how we can raise the standards. The inactions of these officers, none of them should have badges. There, there is no excuse. So on December 2nd at 7 p.m., KSAT is going to take a look back at the last six months in Uvalde. We're honoring those 21 lives taken. We'll hope you'll join us for that special. Adidas now launching an investigation into accusations of misconduct against the rapper formerly known as Kanye West. So Adidas, the multinational company largely known for the athletic apparel, remember they cut ties with Kanye back in October after his anti-Semitic statements. Now the company is looking into West's behavior when Adidas was actually affiliated with him. 
That's after Rolling Stone reported on a private letter from high-ranking Yeezy employees referring to the, quote, toxic and chaotic environment that Kanye West created. Adidas releasing a statement saying in part, quote, it is currently not clear whether the accusations made in an anonymous letter are true. The James Webb Space Telescope has produced another stunning image from deep space. This is the planet WASP 39B, which is orbiting a star a staggering 700 light years away, called an exoplanet because it's outside our solar system. It captures it captured as it's a, it's a, this planet is as big as Saturn, but much hotter. Measurements indicate the surface temperature is hotter than fire, 1600 degrees Fahrenheit. Wow. In addition to Earth-like compounds like sodium and potassium, there is measurable water vapor. Astronomers are excited because they say this is just the beginning of their exploration of planets outside of our solar system. So the after effects of the pandemic still taking a toll on regional airports. Throughout the United States, several airlines have stopped flying to these smaller locations. Now, the Regional Airline Association says smaller airports lost about 34% of flight traffic in 2022. That's compared to 2019. Now, larger airports lost about half that, only 16%. For passengers, this means higher fares, more layoffs, and longer drives to larger airports that still offer their wanted services. Since the start of the pandemic, American Airlines, they've dropped 15 airports and Delta has dropped 10. Well, with tensions high on the ground between Russia and the United States, NATO stepping in. Now, there's some concern that the conflict could one day head to space. As Ines de la reports, there's a secretive base in Germany where an allied space force is keeping a close eye on everything happening up above us. At the heart of Ramstein Air Force Base in Germany, a mysterious new division of military personnel quietly working to keep America and its allies safe from hostile attacks in space. NATO's new space center, created just two years ago as space becomes increasingly militarized. In an exclusive look, our cameras, the first ever allowed inside, heading below ground to this highly classified situation center. Here, space experts from 12 NATO nations. Their mission, keeping an eye on the more than 8,000 satellites orbiting the Earth and sharing their findings across the alliance. There is a lot of nations that are building systems for space, and if we're not monitoring that, then we would lose the advantage of what things are happening in space and those indications and warnings, maybe, of what's to come. Yeah. Russia's war in Ukraine making their task more important than ever, with Ukraine now relying on satellites for its communications with the help of Elon Musk's Starlink. Without those space-based capabilities to assist, I, I think you would not see the successes and really the heroic actions and defense that you've seen from Ukraine and its people. But it's not just modern warfare. Nearly every aspect of our daily lives now involves satellite technology. From financial systems, computer data, mobile phone networks, power grids, and air defense. The Earth's orbit, now a region deemed congested, contested, and competitive. And as our dependence on satellites only increases, so too do the threats to allied assets in space. Space-based capability is a really vital part of how we understand uh, nuclear capability, not just in Russia, but, but more globally. Inez de la Quatera, ABC News, Ramstein Air Base. Time now, 543, 59 degrees out. If you're looking to start a new career, why becoming a veterinarian oh. could soon be a very profitable but also needed service in the near future. Yeah, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Oh, like we said, kind of gloomy to start your Friday morning. Could we see rain? When and where? We're going to check in with Mike in just a few moments. In your morning consumer headlines, the masks are coming off post-pandemic and lipstick is going on. So that's good news for retailers. As one beauty analyst says, lipstick sales are up 37% through October. In fact, the MPD group says lipstick is the only major category in prestige beauty where sales are up compared to pre-pandemic sales. So major retailers like Macy's, Target and Kohl's say cosmetic sales like lipstick are helping to freshen up their outlook for the holiday season. All right, so a lot of pet owners across the country, you've probably been seeing a lot of those long lines to see the veterinarian. 
Well, it's due to a national shortage of veterinarians and veterinary technicians. Well, their appointment problems actually started during the pandemic, but the situation has actually gotten worse as the demand for pet health care services. That demand is going up. It's expected to grow by 33 percent by 2029. Some experts also project a shortage of about 15,000 domestic pet veterinarians by 2030. So you are a, a double pet mom, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Do this you see the long oh, lines? Absolutely. I drive to Corpus Christi oh. for my veterinarian because uh, I've been with them for a long time. And in San Antonio, every time I call, it's like two to three week wait. And if I have a sick child, my dog, <laughs> I, you know, I was like, I need to get them in. So I will drive the two hours to see my vet in Corpus. Oh, and the yeah. pros say it's only going to get worse. Mm -hmm. It's time now, 547, 58 degrees out. Taking a look outside with the roads at Transguide. Like we said, we haven't really been seeing a lot of traffic. This is probably the most traffic we've seen all morning. If any incidents pop up on this Black Friday, we'll let you know about it. Take a look outside with Trans Guide this morning. We haven't seen any incidents pop up on our end. It's still early in the morning. It's also a holiday at 550. Did see a tiny bit um, of moisture on the roads out there, Mike. Maybe not on all the roads mm -hmm. around town, but you said just a little bit of showers. Because you said you saw a couple of sprinkles, just, right? I mean, I mean a, mist. It was a, it's more of like yeah. Driving through a cloud, like a mist. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see. Uh, did you? I didn't see anything no. this morning. So, for the most part, the roads are dry. Any detectable rain? We don't. Sarah, we a... believe you for what it's worth. Thank <laughs> you. I'm not saying you're making up the mess. <laughs> of course we do. One thing we don't have is fog like we had around here yesterday. But if you are heading out shopping uh, today mm -hmm. or doing any traveling earlier on in the day is better as far as not getting into some of that heavy rain because uh, later on and especially overnight, it's gonna get start to get heavy around here. So, all right, first of all, take a look outside and I keep pointing out, you know, that this picture, we couldn't see anything yesterday except pea soup, but uh, yeah, it is a whole lot better out there. Here's the, uh, the showers and this batch of rain right here that is moving through Medina County into Hondo. It has sort of fizzled on out a little bit. We still have that one cell right there, but just, uh, given the fact the other one fizzled out, looks like that one will as well. But you're getting a couple of decent downpours on top of that. And a few more showers off here to the, uh, the west. But again, there's not really anything that just jumps off the map as of right now. Same thing down to the uh, southeast. So just a couple of uh, scattered showers around here. But we're going to keep that chance of rain in the forecast all throughout the day. Temperatures are going to be staying steady. We are in the upper 50s, low 60s around the area. And that's where we're going to stay for the next couple of hours then temperatures will start to go down. It's not going to be a huge drop throughout the day, but we will lose five degrees by the end of the day and rain chances will still stick around and then go up as we go on into later on this afternoon. So we're looking at 57 at four o'clock 56 then and then continue into the lower 50s later on into the early evening hours just after dinner time. So this uh, computer model is doing a pretty good job initializing with some of that rain out there to the west. And again, it really doesn't develop and move on in here throughout the day. So things are slowing down somewhat. That has been the trend. Even when you go back to earlier this week, looking at what was going to be happening, it had looked like we were going to be cleared out by everything was going to be out of here by uh, midday yesterday. But obviously that's not the situation. So we go into uh, late this afternoon. More of these showers are going to be developing, starting to fill in more and then really starts to fill in later on tonight in the overnight hours early tomorrow morning. Then things are going to continue to clear out throughout the day. Again, it is this uh, system out here to the west of us. There's that low spinning right there. That's the one which is going to slowly work its way just kind of up to the northeast, but out ahead of it, it draws in all of that moisture and it really taps into the Gulf of Mexico. And that's why we get some of the heavier rain then later on late this evening and in the overnight hours. And that thing finally gets on out of here in behind that. Also, humidity will drop down this weekend, comes back up Tuesday, then another front's going to move through here, and that'll knock temperatures back down once we get into the middle part of next week. So 58 at noon will continue that slow decline in temperatures throughout the day, and then 57, so not a big drop today, but it is going to be windy. A couple of showers, a couple of thunderstorms, more rain tonight, and then early tomorrow morning will drop down to 47, pardon me, 64 in the afternoon. Nice day tomorrow. It's going to be windy though and then 74 on Sunday after a chilly start big I mean 30 degrees swinging temperatures Sunday morning into Sunday afternoon very dry air 
Again, humidity comes back in Tuesday and then dries out, cools down a little bit midweek. God, that's 74, 75, 78. We haven't had temperatures like that in a while. No, that's pretty darn nice. So it's going to be that jacket in the morning and then you don't need it in the afternoon, especially on Monday. Wow. Sunday looks perfect. I know, Mike, you like it a little cooler. But we'll get, we, it'll be and sunny. Come on. We'll both be happy. It'll be cool in the morning, nice in the afternoon. All right. We both win. Thank you, Mike. That's Mike. Time now, just about 555, 59 degrees out. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, five, five, seven, fireball three, daily four, one, six, one, nine, fireball four. And your cash five, three, seven, 14, 22, 27, Texas two step, 17, 20, 23, 24, big number 20. Good morning and welcome back. A lot more ahead on GMSA in our next half hour. Holiday travel expect to ramp up fast this weekend. A lot of people headed home from Thanksgiving. We're going to give you what you need to know and we're getting you ready for some high school football. Teams in the Alamo City continue their march through the playoffs. Plus, we've been tracking anything happening on the roadways. A few cars here and there, but if anything pops up, we'll keep you posted. We'll be right back. I'm ABC's M1 in Washington. Another Chesapeake, Virginia Walmart employee is speaking out after the shooting rampage. Why her recount is a bit different from what others observed from that day. The details coming up. Prescott throws, lofting end zone. It is caught for the touchdown. Dalton Schultz. $5. It was a good Thanksgiving because it was a victory for the Cowboys. They continue to roll this time, feasting on the Giants this Thanksgiving. And let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. Make sure you grab an umbrella if you're leaving the house today. We're going to check in with Mike for your full forecast. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. It is Friday. It is November 25th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So I got to ask, we were just kind of just talking about it. It's the day after Thanksgiving. Right. We see our weather department has their Christmas tree up. Are you ready for Christmas already? Yes. My husband is on top of it. He is like <laughs> Mr. Christmas himself. He put up the decorations inside and outside, I want to say like a week ago. Wow. Yeah. All right, so Mike, are yes. you ready? I know you're big into the Christmas it, decorations. The outdoor decorations are, I actually put them up two weeks ago. But the oh. lights were turned Which, on now. No, they, they were on. Okay, okay. Yeah, they were on um, because it worked out well because last weekend was just, you know, to be outside. So indoor, it, I had kind of wanted to do a little bit and got a lot of pushback from the boys. Like, mm -hmm. nope, it's Thanksgiving. We're going to do Thanksgiving. Mm. Okay. So, so this weekend, then. Don't want to eat Thanksgiving off the Christmas china or anything like that. So, yeah, this weekend we're going to be uh, doing the, the tree and everything. So, yeah. So, love that. It's that time of year. So, but uh, it's right around the corner. What's today? The 25th? The 25th. 25th. Can you believe that? Anyway, back to the uh, the weather right now. And as you can see, we can see out there this morning, unlike yesterday when we had just that thick, thick fog all around the area. We do have some showers. So as uh, Sarah and Max were talking about, take an umbrella. But, you know, there's not really a heck of a lot out there. We do have some of these showers there in portions of Medina County. Another batch right there, Northern Frio County, kind of sliding up 35. If you are heading uh, on the roads this morning and be it traveling or heading off shopping. Yeah, watch out for a couple of showers, but for the most part, things are drier than what it was yesterday because we had all that mist and drizzle around here and we will continue with some of these uh, light little showers out there. A couple of them out in the, the hill country as well. Also take note that everything is sliding up to the north as of right now. That's um, think of it as a giant wheel out there. The hub of it is off to the west of us and it's spinning in a counterclockwise direction. And as that low moves on across the area, that's what's going to enhance rain chances late today and especially tonight and then in the overnight hours. Mid 50s, low 60s, 60 here in town. Humidity is much lower too. These numbers are at least 10 degrees, 10 to 15 degrees lower than what they were in the afternoon because it got muggy yesterday. It was just that that soupy muggy kind of feeling yesterday, but much more comfortable this morning. Mold is on the moderate side and throughout the rest of today we are going to be seeing 
We got a couple of showers this morning. More rain today. It's going to be windy. We'll be in the mid 50s, so temperatures are going to be dropping a little bit throughout the afternoon hours. Then the rain's really going to start to pick up as we go into tonight. Some of the rain is definitely going to be on the heavy side. It will be windy. We're going to have rain, potentially some heavy rain early, early tomorrow. Then we're going to start to clear out plenty of sunshine and it is going to be warmer. We're looking at mid 60s tomorrow, mid 70s on Sunday after a couple of cool mornings. All those details coming up and a look into next Next week, yeah, first of December is just next week. Details in just a couple of minutes. Sarah, Max. Thank you, Mike. Let's take a look outside with the roads with Trans Guide 1604 at Braun. We're seeing a lot, you know, a lot more cars, and then we actually see some lights there at Loop 1604 in Culebra. Not sure if those were TxDOT lights or if those were first responder lights. And not a lot of traffic there at 1604 in Medeo Creek, but if any incidents pop up, we will let you know about them as a lot of people are going to be hitting the roads later this morning. And a lot of people hitting the roads to get those Black Friday deals. People looking to save money on holiday gifts this Black Friday. Obviously, inflation hitting a lot of people hard and they're trying to find good deals today. That's why hundreds of people are actually flocking to the stores like Best Buy. Our Camelia Wattis has been there all morning at Best Buy. So Camelia, what are shoppers looking for this Black Friday? Well, I mean, it's plain to say, but deals. I mean, people are trying to save money. They've been having their eyes on certain items, but they've been waiting for today and the rest of the weekend to actually get those deals. Now, I'm at the Best Buy at 1604 and 281, and I've been talking to shoppers. I mean, I've see seen people get TVs. There weren't many TVs, like the certain size that they wanted last year, um, but now they're available this year. And so I have Esteban here. He actually got quite a few things. Can you tell me what you got today. Yes, I ended up getting a monitor that I was going to use for gaming and I got a microphone that I really needed. Nice. And you got a couple games too. Awesome. And so you you went Black Friday shopping last year, you're Black Friday shopping this year. What do you what are the differences? Do you think they're better deals? Yeah, cuz I think now it's just like I feel like stuff that I got last year wasn't on sale as much as it was this year. So there's more sales you think this year okay so interesting i think there are more deals and i think there are more sales but everything costs more so it's i mean i don't know if it actually is a sale or not i'm not good at math but for now i'm going to send it back to the studio and i'm wishing everybody who's trying to look for deals hopefully they can find them next sarah thank you camelia well there's a lot happening across the alamo city happening later today the Christmas holiday season. Well, Alamo City officially kicking it off with the 38th annual HEB tree lighting at Travis Park. It is amazing and it's such great family friendly fun. The 50 foot tall Christmas tree it arrived last week. The lights will be turned on around 620 this evening. HEB providing free bus routes to the event. There's also going to be free ice skating from 3 to 530. And obviously the event is open to the public and I could not endorse it anymore. Also happening today, the 41st Ford Holiday River Parade. You're going to want to bring, bring your rain gear, according to Mike. So the parade starts at 6 p.m. It's on the Riverwalk. The Grinch is set to be oh. the Grand Marshal for the parade this year. The theme this year is tastes and traditions from around the world. Tickets are available for purchase now. But you can also, there are some free spots where you can bring your own chairs and sit along the river walk as well. So you can find the link to buy the tickets on ksat.com. And so while so many people were at home enjoying Thanksgiving with their loved ones last night, others were working to keep our community safe. San Antonio firefighters at Firehouse 4, they spent the holiday together. They enjoyed dinner between calls and obviously trying to eat with loved ones when they could. So according to the National Fire Protection Association, Thanksgiving is actually the peak day for home cooking fires. More than three times the daily average calls for fire emergencies. Every day we seek out a way to step up our game and to provide the best service for the community. So some good news. Firefighters tell us yesterday they did not have to respond to nearly as many fires as they expected. As we head into the weekend, a community is mourning over that Virginia Walmart shooting. Right now, we're hearing new witness accounts, eyewitness accounts of other survivors in that room where police say the shooter opened fire at his colleagues. ABC's M. Wynn has more from Washington. 
The Chesapeake, Virginia community is still reeling from the Walmart massacre. Police identifying the gunman as 31-year-old Andre Bing, a store manager who allegedly walked into the break room and opened fire on his co-workers before shooting himself. In that room, Jesse Wilczewski saying it appeared Bing was targeting certain people. People that, you know, were just moments ago just sitting there listening to our team lead. And it's rough. She says at one point, Bing pointed the gun at her but didn't pull the trigger, believing it was because she had just started five days earlier. He had the gun pointed at me. And then he went like this and put the gun up. And then he, he just looked at me and said, Jesse, go home. New video surfacing filmed by a colleague years ago showing Bing at the store. Fellow employees describing him as a loner. Two wounded are still in the hospital. One patient is improving, the other still in critical condition. The city in a statement saying during this holiday, they're thinking of every victim, releasing their names and images. Lorenzo Gamble, Brian Pendleton, Kelly Pyle, Randall Blevins, Tanika Johnson, and a boy. Name withheld because he was only 16. You don't think something like this can happen but it ends up happening and it just shocks you to the very core. The city holding a candlelight vigil Monday night at the Chesapeake City Park to remember the victims. Already this year alone in the U.S., there have been more than 600 mass shootings, according to the Gun Violence Archive. While authorities continue investigating a motive, they're expecting to release more information later today. M1, ABC News, Washington. Time now is 610, 59 degrees out. So to come, America and England, they're battling again, but this time the World Cup will tell you, well, we'll tell you when you can watch the highly anticipated matchup. And after the break, UT star running back Bijan Robinson close to making history. What he needs to do today against Baylor to make it all happen. 59 degrees at 610 right now. Not a lot of rain out there now, but any of those big events that you're planning to go to tonight, like the River Parade, football games, lighting the tree, Mike says you're going to want to bring your rain gear. He'll have a forecast when we come back.